So what's going on, babies? This is your boy, the Sebastian Alexander Bonet. Um, doing a brief video from the car as I am loving to do now as I drive. Um, I have just witnessed something that bothered, bothered me and my spirit, if you will. I was coming back from Ubering or whatever the case may be and on my way to um, Sonic Burger to get me a um, Master Blast or whatever. And I was at a light just vibing to Sweet Dreams um, by the Eurythmics and I saw a man, uh, uh, indigenous as I say, I don't like to say homeless. Um, but I like to say indigenous, um, on his knees, digging out of the trash can, eating, like the public trash can, you know, here, well, back at home, you know, in Tallahassee, most places, they have trash cans to where they just go out to, you know, restaurants or whatever, they put their stuff in the trash can out back. Out here, there are a lot of storefronts and, and uh, shops and, and buildings. And so they'll put their trash and their trash bags out in front of the shop and the trash man will come by and pick them up in the middle of the night. And um, there was this, this gentleman that was on the ground going through garbage, picking out what he was going to eat. And that totally devastated me. You know, we all know that, you know, indigenous people exist and I guess we, we never think about how they eat or how they have to eat or whatever. And I, and you know, for me, it's my heart always, always goes out to those persons because it can easily be me that is in that same situation. You know, most of us are, you know, one paycheck away from being homeless. You know, we, we live paycheck to paycheck, you know, rob Peter to pay Paul. And it, it really bothered me. And I, at that point, I didn't have any cash on me and I, w I would have gave him something, but even, it, it, well, it, it's one of those things, you know, you have to, it's not a battle, but I do say you pick and choose your battle because sometimes people, life, circumstances, they can't help where they are at this point. Life has beaten them and battered them so bad to where, oh my God, there's a park in front of my house. Hey, y'all shut up, ma. Yes, Lord. Uh, life has beaten and battered them so bad to where they are not able to cope or, you know, they're, they're, they're making do what they have. And then sometimes you have those persons where they know what they've done or they did it on purpose and they're homeless. They're content on being homeless. Um, they just choose to be homeless. They get a check every month for disability or whatever the case may be. And um, they make more than enough to be to not be homeless or indigenous. And that's a choice they make. And so it's a battle for me because, you know, you want to help them. Uh, excuse me. You want to help them, but um, it's just is your money going to where it needs to go? And that's something you can't control. All you can do is give from your heart and just pray that they do what they're supposed to do with it. But this man, it bothered me. And I, I immediately, immediately, immediately interceded on his behalf and I just asked God to bless him, fill him up, you know, um, put him where he needs to be because I, 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 it, just to see somebody and it's one thing to know in the back of your mind but to see someone as close as I am from you to my phone to see someone on their knees outside eating out of trash it you have to be a cold-hearted person if that doesn't do anything to you, if it doesn't affect you some way. And that just, that bothered me because I, I think about my life and so many 
mistakes that I made, but it was only by the grace of God and good family that snatched me back and said, you're going down the wrong path. And it just, God, it just, it just bothered me. I, I prayed for that man. And I also thank the Lord for, for me, for just honestly grace and mercy because child, Y'all just to understand out of half the stuff that I, I've been through, how it is just purely grace and mercy that has sustained me, kept me, blessed me, pushed me through. You know, that, 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 that whole old song, somebody somewhere was praying for me. Honey, I've had, I've, I've had lineages praying for me. And up until my great grandmother passed, Back in December, no, this past December, maybe a year she's been gone. You're talking about four generations of people praying for me, or three. My great grandmother, my grandmother, my mother, and let's not and my siblings. We pray for each other. Four generations. Somebody somewhere was praying for me. There were times when I couldn't pray for myself, but those prayers that they prayed years and years ago when I was a baby, when they touched and agreed are, 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 are coming into fruition over my life now. So I'm saying all of this to say my friends, my family, everybody on YouTube, Facebook, be grateful for where you are. It may not be where you want to be. It may not be where you need to be, but child, it can be so much worse. I, I talked to my staff at work about being grateful. One of my staff members, I actually, you know, I walk around and ask my staff, do they need anything? Can I help them with anything? You know, with work or training, he always say, if you got a blessing for me, I'll take it. And I say, well, you're here at work, ain't you? Anytime you're above the ground and the ground ain't above you, you bless. You got nice clothes on, you here making money. You know, it, it ain't the job that you may want. But just know you are doing better than somebody else. Somebody wish that they could be in your shoes, literally. Your literal shoes, your figurative shoes, your mental shoes, spiritual shoes. So I, be grateful. You know, sometimes I look at what I don't have and where I would like to be in life at 35 years old. But God, I could be so many other places so many worse off places and I am grateful for where I am. That don't mean I'm going to stop. That don't mean I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just stop here and say, okay, I'm here and this is where I'm going to stop. No, I'm not saying that, but I have to, I'm grateful. I'm, con, I, I'm, I'm grateful. The Bible says if you are faithful over a few things, I'll make you rulers over many. So if I can't be grateful for this little two bedroom, one and a half bath apartment that me and my roommate share. How is he gonna let me get my own apartment and afford my own apartment? Cause stuff up here real expensive, y'all. If I can't be grateful for this, how can I get what I want? If I, if I can't be grateful for this 2012 Dodge Avenger that I'm paying on every month faithfully, how can he upgrade me to that Mercedes Benz S class? If I can't do right by this or be faithful over this, that's where we get lost at sometimes as people, as humans. We won't, we won't, we won't. And then the thing about it, he'll let you go out there and get it, but will you keep it? Will it end up the way, I want a man, I want a man, I want a man. You go out there and get a man, that man beat you. That man cheat on you. I want a job, I want a job. Yeah, he'll give you a job, but is that where you're supposed to be? Is that, are, are you doing your, your, your calling in that, uh, in that, in that industry? And so sometimes he'll give you what you want, but it ain't what you need. And, and, and later on in life, you will see in hindsight that, yeah, you asked for it, and God, he, he'll give you what you asked for. Good, bad, or indifferent. And so hopefully that you're able to uh, 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 handle 
what he is going to give you. And sometimes he gives it to you so you can see that you cannot handle it, that you're not prepared, that you're not ready. I want this job. I want this job. But you know, this job is way up here and your education level is down here or your, 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 your competency to handle this is not there. But so you big, bad and almighty. I'm going to do it my way. I'm going to do it my way. And he don't give it to you. You get there. You look boo boo in the face. Like what the hell am I doing? How am I going to do this job? Do you say, Lord, help me. Please give me the strength to learn. Give me the strength to understand what's going on. No, no, no. Those should have been your 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 pre-prayers before you started saying, Lord, give me. Before you asked for a car, Lord, God, let me get a job to pay for this car. Before I said, God, I need, I need, I need. Look, I, yeah, a car is, is, is good and great. But if you ain't got no job to pay for that, let's, let's start at the beginning. Lord, God. Give me the willpower every morning to wake up so I can go out and look for a job. First part. Lord God, I thank you for much for waking me up. Now let me get out there and get pound this pavement and meet these folks to where I can be blessed with a job. All right, second part. Faith without work is dead. You got to do your work. Out there now, you mean folks, Lord God, let me be articulate enough to where, and impress them to where they want to hire me for this position. All these pre-prayers, you got, you got to start off somewhere and work your way up. You just don't start off there and then you can start off as a freshman now all of a sudden you got your degree no baby there are stages there are stages your your your, your, your freshman year your sophomore year your junior year your senior year and let's not play let's be real then you got your graduating senior year because some of y'all some of us i was uh, uh two and three year seniors hey so with with all that said so I'm about to go in here and, and get my eat my ice cream and watch a little TV. Um, be grateful, guys. Be that that hurt, God that hurt my heart because it easily could be us. Easily be our family members. Easily be our neighbors. You don't know what people are going through. You don't know what their life life shit. I tell folks, my I tell my I tell my coworkers all the time, my 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 um my my um my staff. We work in hospitality. We are my motto at my job is smiles and giggles. People pay us for smiles and giggles, great service, and make them feel at home. Life happens. Shit happens to where some days it takes every fiber in your being not to cry. Every fiber in your being not to just say, Lord, I give up. I can't take it no more. Every fiber in your being from literally jumping off a bridge and saying, Father, take me. Life happens. But you just got to like say, hey, I am more than a conqueror through him that is Jesus Christ. He would never put more on me than I can bear. I'm going to have to grin and bear it now, but baby, when I come through it, all I'm going to have is smiles and giggles because the fact of the matter is you don't know my story. You don't know every everything that I've been through. And I know this like I'm quoting songs <laughs> because I am, but those songs are true. You don't know my story, all the things that I've been through. You can't feel my pain to understand what is it, how I've gotten here. You never understand my praise. So don't try to figure it out because my worship, my worship is for real. I say a lot of stuff. I, I'm a cusser. I tell anybody, I'm a, I, I'm a Christian, but I cuss a little. I do. I love sex. Sure do. I do. I do. I post sometimes inappropriate things on Facebook. Sure do. Sure do. But that don't make me no less of a Christian. Don't make me no less of a man that loves God. Because I tell anybody the same way I go hard for LGBT rights, for, 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 for equality, for sex, even for the menagerie, I go equally as hard for my God. See, I can't, I can't slight my God. People say, no, you straddle the fence. No, no, I'm being me. I'm authentic. I'm not straddle the fence. Because for me to just say, oh, I'm holier than thou, like some of y'all old folks do in the church. Oh, like you ain't never had a past or never even have a present. Yeah. No, I'm authentic. I'm, I, I am that I am. Either you like it or you love it. But in the same token, 
I go real hard for my God. My God go real hard for me. Some people don't understand how doors doors are opening for me and just being open. It's not because I'm so good. It's not because I'm so holy because I'm not. It's because I have a relationship. I talk to him. And I say, look here, I'm not one of those, for me, I'm not one of those ones, I mean, I'm at the end of this video, I'm not one of those ones that I pray those long saints, the Father, I come to you on bended knee, Father, mm, so I'm a tea slip, Father of Isaac, Abraham, or whoever the, uh, uh, of me, no, that's, that's great for my, for my older generation, or whomever, that, if that's the way you get through, by all means, yes, I'm putting a club on my car, honey, I live in Newark, Newark is, is the motor theft capital of the world, so yes, ma'am, club down. They won't be taking her. Um, but I talk to God real quick, like, look, hey, like I talk to y'all. <laughs> hey, what's going on? What's the tea? Um, everything well here? Um, look, so uh, my check going to be a little short this week. Um, yeah, I, should, I shouldn't have bought that stuff. But um, I need your assistance because um, you know these bills are due. And um, please, as humble as you know how, step in, fix, correct. Amen. That's how I talk to God. I talk to God like he's a regular, everyday person. I'm not going, why beat around the bush with Jesus? He already know. He know you didn't spend your money on weed, drugs, shoes, weeds, eyelashes, fingernails, uh, stuff that and stuff that stuff going uh, that ain't got that don't amount as the old folks say to a hill of beans. Tell the truth. He already know why lie to the man. He know where you didn't spend that damn money. So I had to tell him, look, hey, hey, um, immaculate one, um, need your services. Um, need a little help. So, please. And I call it a day. And I go on him in. And won't he make a way? Won't he send a ram in the bush where I get a check in the mail? And my mama say, you know, I was just thinking about you. I put $150 in your account. Won't he do it? Tell me he won't. That's my, won't he will? Will he won't? Yes, he will. So, Anyways, the point of this, because my, my sonic blast is starting to melt and I'm about to go get to my house. Be grateful. Be grateful. Be grateful. How can he make you a ruler over many and much if you can't be grateful for the little bit that he didn't gave you already? Be, that's the main purpose of this video. After everything I didn't say, be grateful because God knows I am grateful. I am grateful. I am blessed. And I am I am privileged to be called a child of the Most High King. So, with that being said, thank you for tuning in to another car episode of The Audition with your boy, the Sebastian Alexander Bonet, with his 20-minute testimony, if you will. But uh, I'm about to go in the house and eat my um, large turtle pecan sonic blast side. No, I'm lactose intolerant. So, be this is going to be the fool when it comes out. Huh? This means no dates for the next two or three days because I'm going to be gas and see. All right, you babies. Good night. Much love. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and on Twitter and on Facebook at Sebastian Bonet, S-E-B-A-S-T-I-A-N-B-O-N-E-T. And, um, oh, yeah, we're looking for new chapters for Dasmar, Inc. Um, Dasmar is the Distinguished and Sophisticated Men of Royalty Incorporated. It is an LGBT organization for men, uh, gay and bisexual men, uh, to complete their community service initiatives. Um, hit me up if you need more information, but it's Dasmar, D A S M O R dot org, which is the website. All right, guys, peace and much love. Oh, yeah, and I'm a founder as well. Um, other organization that we have, um, five, six, seven chapters now, somewhere in that area. But, anyways, peace and much love. I'll let you later. Bye.